Hello, welcome to Kubernetes AI Day in Europe. This session is about a component registry for Kubeflow pipelines. And my name is Christian Kadner, and I work for the Center for Open Source Data and AI um, for IBM. And this is how this looks. This is the, the SVL, um, the Silicon Valley Laboratories, um, just south of San Jose, California. Okay, this session. Um, this session will have two parts, a presentation and the demo. In the presentation, um, I will quickly um, talk about the AI lifecycle, introduce Q4 pipelines, and point out some reusability challenges. I'll talk about uh, pipeline components and the new proposed component registry. That'll lead me to the machine learning exchange, and I will talk about um, some of the technologies we have integrated and also quickly show Watson Studio pipelines. In the demo, I will show what the machine learning exchange is, what it can do, and also show the new template registry API. So let's dive right in it, into it. What are the stages of the AI lifecycle? Well, it's mostly about models, data models and data sets. So in a nutshell, we use data to build models uh, in order to automate decisions. And each of those big steps, they have, you know, smaller steps, you know, data we have to gather, we have to analyze it. Um, the models they have to be trained, it can really be um, traditional machine learning models, deep learning models. And once they're trained, we want to deploy them and we have to maintain them. Now, it's of course not that simple. If we zoom in just a bit, um, you see there's many more steps involved. And I'm a software developer, not a data scientist or machine learning expert. Um, so to me, this is, this is already way too complicated. Um, so alone, the data preparation has multiple, multiple steps and stages, right? The data needs to be um, ingested, cleansed, analyzed, um, and transformed, you know, and validated, of course. And then just before training, the data set has to be split into training set and, and a test set. And then when you're ready to um, train your model, um, you have to, of course, you know, optimize, um, you have to, um, optimize the hyperparameters, um, you have to validate the model. Um, and then once your model is finally trained, um, you want to deploy it on the cloud or even on edge devices. Um, and then you want to inference, you feed it data and you get prediction out of, predictions out of it. Um, all of that has to be monitored um, and logged. And you know if, if the predictions over time um, you know, show anomalies or you have some drift, um, these models have to be fine-tuned and, you know, the whole process might have to start over again. Now, that is to say that whole AI lifecycle um, has numerous challenges, right? There's a high number of steps that need to be performed. Um, that process uh, remains, you know, bifurcated amongst various teams um, and the artifacts created or consumed oftentimes are not shared. Uh, instead, they're going to be recreated um, multiple times over. And then, of course, there are challenges with traceability and governance, um, risk management, and lineage tracking, and metadata collection. So what's needed is a central catalog for all of those AI and ML assets that can be shared and reused across organizational boundaries. And these data sets and models, you know, they need have to have quality checks, proper licenses, you know, lineage tracking, and all of that is required to speed up that life cycle. Now, Let's start with Q4 pipelines. What's the purpose of pipelines? So pipelines, they offer you know end-to-end -end orchestration um, of the machine learning uh, workflow, right? They provide easy experimentation, you know, giving you trials and experiments, um, and you know, you can manage your runs and group them into experiments. And it's built, um, pipelines are built with components, and those components, you know, they're supposed to be reused and shared um, and you know multiple components um, fulfill different tasks some of those tasks you know they are needed in in various pipelines over and over again so you can use components to rebuild uh, and build many solutions now q4 pipelines um, is built on top of an engine that allows to schedule those ml workflows and um, by default, the execution engine for ML pipelines um, is Argo. 
Um, we here at IBM, we use Tecton as an execution, en execution engine. And um, of course, there's a user interface um, that helps with, you know, tracking experiments, um, starting and uh, running jobs, you know, tracking and, you know, following logs, um, as I'll show later. And an SDK for um, data scientists who actually do, who are doing the machine learning training and the SDK helps with, with those steps. And the SDK is especially useful when um, data scientists want to work with their notebooks, um, which are typically um, based on Python and the Kubeful Pipelines SDK also um, is in Python, written in Python. Now, the individual steps of the pipeline, um, the, the pipelines are built um, out of components. So the building blocks of pipelines are components. And a component is really a self-contained set of code, um, usually performs one step in a pipeline, such as data pre-processing or data transformation, model training, et cetera. And it can be thought of like a, like a function. A function has a name, parameters, return values, and of course, um, you know, function body. Um, components are containerized, you know, they run independently on Kubernetes. And, you know, components have input arguments and they produce output values um, so that they can be used by downstream components. Now, when you um, write a component, um, you have various options. You can either write the YAML spec directly, um, or you can compile a component from a Python DSL. In that um, component spec, there will be metadata, name and description, et cetera, and the interface will be described, interface being the input and output parameters, um, name type, you know, description, um, and a default value, and the actual business logic of the component, um, you know, typically Python or shell scripts, and the Docker container that um, the code runs in. Now, q Pipelines has been around for a couple of years, and there is a rich component um, ecosystem already. Um, there are numerous platforms and vendors who are contributing components. Um, there are components for various ML pipeline stages, um, data pre-processing, um, model validation, the training itself, the model evaluation. There are um, components that are focused on ML ops kind of tasks, right? They can send notifications via SMS or Slack when model training is done, for example. Um, there are basic utilities, you know, to upload and download files from cloud storage. And there are entire um, pipelines in that ecosystem as well. Now, there's a problem um, with the existing um, Q4 pipeline ecosystem. Um, and the problem is, is a result of um, the richness of the, of the number of components that exist already. And you can think of it as you know, a bunch of Lego blocks, like in the in the picture that, that you see here, right? It's it's an unorganized um, heap of blocks, and what we really want is we want an organized set of you know building blocks that can be used um, to build pipelines. So the challenges are in the authoring and the publishing of the components themselves. Um, there's a little documentation on you know how to author components. Um, there's multiple ways in which they can be authored. Um, as I mentioned before, there's a Python um, DSL that you can use to compile your components, or you can write the component spec in YAML directly. And in q Pipelines v2, there's also the intermediate representation that is a platform independent um, representation of a pipeline. And all these different ways of authoring, they have um, no feature parity, and there's not a good way to document and publish these components. Similar problems for hosting. Um, right now, all of these components, um, they're hosted on GitHub. And that allows minimal capabilities in terms of indexing and searching, um, categorization, and, and versioning. And oftentimes, um, components that are contributed, they're not very well maintained. Um, as you know, things might be important um, for, for a certain project, right? And then the developers, they move on, project evolves. Um, however, often these components, um, they don't get maintained very well. Now, what can help with that would be a component registry. So this is a proposal by the Kubeful Pipelines team, and it's currently work in progress. 
Um, you can find some details in the Kubeco Pipelines uh, repository in issue 7382. I have a link at the end of the presentation as well, um, where you can find um, the design doc, design docs for the, the API and the SDK. Now, that new protocol is meant to be implemented by third body template registry servers. Um, and on the KFP side, there will be um, first class integration into the SDK, meaning that um, data scientists, they can use the SDK and they can um, download components directly from a registry, discover different versions, and you know have a simplified way to search uh, and find components they, they need. Um, the benefits also include that the format will be unified. The component format will be a YAML format. Um, there will be versioning and tagging, um, similar to Docker image tags. And um, the KFP will also provide credential management. Um, and components may even be um, able to be run as a pipeline directly. Um, this is just a bit of terminology in the new component registry. Um, you know, it's going to be the, the registry host, that's the server. Um, templates will be versioned. And each of these versions can be tagged and a collection of um, one template with all of its versions is called a package. Here are a few examples of um, what that new um, registry protocol might look like. Um, you see the API endpoints on the right side here. Um, most importantly is probably the, the download and the upload. Um, and then the metadata um, API endpoints for packages and, and tags. Um, here on the left side, you can see um, two examples of what the REST API would feel like, how you would upload a component, given that you have the proper authorization, and how you would download it. And the download really, um, really is just the, the host, and then the name of the package and the version or the tag of the component version. And in the SDK, it would look as simple as you know loading a component from a registry. Of course, the client has to connect to the registry first, and then you just specify your package and the tag or the version of the package that you want. And then, of course, there are methods to list all of the, the versions in a package or list all of the packages in the registry. Now, what might such a registry look like other than what you can um, query or download via the API? Now, um, here comes the machine learning exchange. That is a fairly recent project um, created by IBM and sponsored by the Linux Foundation for Data and AI. And the machine learning exchange, or short MLX, really is a, is a catalog of machine learning assets um, bundled with an execution engine. The execution engine being um, Q4 pipelines on Tecton. Um, so what is the machine learning exchange? Um, so in the machine learning exchange, um, you have um, various types of machine learning related assets, um, the pipelines and components, of course, but also uh, models, curated data sets, and notebooks that can be used to train models using those data sets. For each of those asset types or assets, um, MLX can generate sample pipeline code. So when you upload um, a new model, um, MLX will generate the code around it, and then you can run it directly on, on with Q4 pipelines. It's especially useful if you have um, data sets that you, that you want to use to train your models, and, and you, especially if you already have a notebook that wants to make use of that data set. Um, the engine underneath is Q4 pipelines on Tecton, and then we have various technologies integrated, um, like Datashim, KF Serving, or KServe. Um, we have the notebook component from Elira, and we have data sets and models from the model asset exchange and data asset exchange, another um, project by Codate. The metadata we have aligned with ML spec as good as, as was possible. And of course, um, MLX can be deployed on either OpenShift or Kubernetes. Now, here's what the user interface would look like. Um, for, here are eight sample pipelines. Um, you can filter them and find a pipeline that, that you want to look at in more detail. You can see the pipeline graph um, details uh, with description, the YAML. This is the um, cave protector YAML you see here. And then the pipeline can be launched um, directly 
from the MNX UI. Um, you can provide your parameters and click Submit. And then you will be um, presented with the Kubeflow pipelines, the run graph. Um, you can see the, the configuration and visualizations, the metadata. Um, you can find details, the volume mounts, and you can follow the logs. And of course, you know, the part specs, and you can inspect um, things in detail in Kubernetes directly. We have a very similar experience for components. All of these components here we make use of, or most of these components we make use of in um, the pipelines that we generate. Um, this one here is an echo example. I chose them because it's short and easy to easy to to demo and show in a GIF. Um, here's a view of our models, um, and very similarly, um, data sets and notebooks. Now, notebooks um, are interesting here. You can preview a notebook with the um, notebook previewer, as you can see here. And once you run the notebook, which you can do from MLX, MLX as well, um, the, we will use the Lyra notebook run component. It will kick off the run of the notebook um, using papermill in a Kubernetes pod. And then, of course, you can follow the logs. Um, and at the end of the run, um, there will be a, a new notebook generated. Um, all of the output cells will be populated, and you can download that directly. And of course, you know the notebook does whatever it's supposed to. In this case, you know it's training a model. Here's a listing um, of the the um, pipelines, components, models, datasets, and notebooks we currently have in the machine learning exchange. Um, this is an, an ever-growing list. Um, and these are also um, available um, in our read-only deployment on ml-exchange.org, which I will show um, as part of my demo. Now, some of the technologies we integrated in MLX um, is DataShim, which we use to manage our data sets. Um, now with data, data shim, we can easily create persistent volumes right? and, and we can get data from S3, um, H3 or NFS um, and you know, basically reduce um, the amount of work that um, end users would have, have to do in order to get data sets and work with them in Kubernetes. Um, for models, we have an integration with um, KF Serving uh, or KSERF, um, or we can also serve our models natively with Kubernetes. Um, I mentioned that MLX is built on pipelines, specifically Kubeflow pipelines with Tekton. Um, the difference being the execution engine um, as Kubeflow pipelines are um, by default um, powered by Argo, and we, know we have Tekton as the engine. And of course, it runs on OpenShift and Kubernetes. Now, one um, implementation or one use of Q4 pipelines um, in, in an IBM product is Watson Studio pipelines. And here you can see that we have a canvas um, where you can drag individual components from a component palette um, and create your machine learning workflows that way. Um, yeah, it's currently in open beta um, and you can follow the, link, the links here to try that out. With that, I will go to the demo part. So here I have an instance of um, the machine learning exchange. I um, did a port forwarding to 3000, so it looks like it's local, but it's not. Um, and you can see our landing page, um, and you can browse through the individual assets, data sets, models, pipelines, components, um, and notebooks. And let's start with data sets. Um, one of the the most recent data sets we integrated is the project CodeNet. Um, that is a large scale data set with approximately 14 million code samples um, in 50 languages. Um, and each of them was a solution or proposed solution for one of 4,000 coding problems. Uh, since that data set is really large, um, we cut it down into a few smaller ones and we selected um, one for a language classifier um, that I'm going to show in, in more detail. So once you go onto an asset or click onto an asset, um, you get a more detailed overview. 
um, you can, for data sets, you can download the original source files. Um, you can browse the license, um, you know, the size of the set, uh, how it was created, and oftentimes follow links to the source. Each of our assets uh, is defined by uh, a YAML spec, uh, similar to how components are spec'd in Qful pipelines. Um, we have YAML specs for data sets, models, and notebooks. And you know they have information like the the name and the description, um, version, um, where it's from, you know what the license is, um, and you know other related um, information. Like here, you can see that there is a notebook we have integrated that is related to this data set. Once you found a data set that you want to work with, um, you can mount it or create a persistent volume claim and can later be mounted. Um, and in this case, you would have to choose um, what namespace you want, want to create that volume in. I click Submit. And then the Q4 Pipelines run graph comes up. And that'll usually take a while. Um, you know, images have to be um, downloaded, container created. And then once it's done, you can click on Details, um, can see what, what log messages there are. And in this case, um, the idea of the created Existing volume. Um, now we can use that ID and run the related notebook. For project CodeNet, we have a language classification notebook. And again, you can see some details here. Um, the YAML file that describes um, where you can see find the source of the notebook um, and what are the Python requirements here and what image does this run on. And you can also preview the notebook code. Um, we use N the NV Viewer component for that. Um, and, and this comes handy, um, especially if notebooks change over time, you get newer versions, and you want to you know, just reassure you what version you're looking at. Um, you can see that. Also, you can see the, um, um, the output um, from the initial run, which could come in handy when you want to run it again and compare it with the most recent, most recent results. So we can launch this. We're going to put in the ID of the PVC persistent volume we created and the mount path and click Submit. And then um, the Elira notebook component should um, start, it should um, download the notebook from S3 storage um, and use paper mill, download the, um, the image and use paper mill to start the run. Once it starts running, you can see the log files. Um, we'll start with all the pip installs, um, and then we'll go through all the training steps. Since that is a long running process, I'm gonna quickly go to the run I started earlier. Click on the logs here. Um, and at the very, already zoom to the bottom, the very end, you can see that um, a new um, or regenerated notebook was created, and it's available via S3 on Minio. Um, I downloaded that earlier, and just show looks very similar to the notebook we just previewed. Um, go through all the cells, and at the end, um, in this particular notebook, um, we take our trained model um, and use a, a small test set to do some predictions. And since this is a um, a language classification, we give it um, 10 samples uh, in 10 languages, C, C Sharp, C++, um, the Haskell JavaScript, um, and so on. And here we can see that for most of them, um, the predictions are correct, except for C++, um, we only have nine out of 10 correct predictions. And if you wanna compare that to the initial run when the notebook was first uploaded, we can go to the original notebook in the notebook source code viewer and scroll to the bottom and see, ah, in the original upload, um, two of the languages, you know, were not quite correct. Um, in our latest run, we classified all of our C um, code samples correctly. So we improved. That was the quick demo um, of the machine learning exchange. You can find out more about the machine learning exchange um, on our GitHub repository. 
and also find a uh, find our read-only deployment at mlexchange.org. And here you can you know see all of the all of the assets I showed showed you just during the demo, um, except in that read-only deployment um, we don't allow um, users all over the world to to kick off training jobs, right? So Kubo pipelines um, is not integrated in this um, read-only deployment. On our GitHub repository, you will also find um, information to um, just general information how to use machine learning exchange, find more information about all the integrated technologies, um, and you will find um, deployment options. Um, we have a quick start that only requires you to have Docker, Docker Compose, and you can run it locally, the catalog, not the Q4 pipelines. If you want Q4 pipelines, you can install it with Kubernetes and Docker. Um, or if you have access to a Kubernetes or OpenShift cluster, you can deploy it on, onto your cluster. Actually, let me quickly show the, um, the new template registry protocol. Um, so here you can see um, an API browser for all of the APIs of MLX. And we um, integrated that new template registry service. And here you can see all of the, the endpoints. Um, you know, it can list your packages, you can upload new packages, delete packages, um, find versions. And here you can see one of those endpoints and um, that is to list all packages. You can see all the, the components in this case that we have added. And for each of the components, um, you can also see the individual versions and the tags. So they go here. And um, for example, we have that echo sample component um, and you can see all of the individual versions that we have for this. Um, now we deleted a few in between. So there's now we have V4, uh, V2 and the latest. Um, and you can directly access these um, also directly either via curl or Python requests or in the browser. And you can show your versions, show your tags, um, or directly download the component. Um, the integration with Q the Kubeflow Pipelines SDK isn't ready, so that will be for a future talk. Um, okay. Let's quickly um, jump back to the presentation. Um, there are a few links here that might be of interest. Um, there's a link to the KFP template registry protocol, um, or at least the issue on the Q4 pipelines repo that has links to the RFE and the design docs. Um, you have the links to the machine learning exchange, um, the GitHub repository, the website, and you can reach out to us via Slack. Um, and for the Center for Open Source Data and Technologies, um, you can visit our website or find our articles on medium.com slash date. That, if you're interested, um, there are, we have four sessions from Codate at the Kubernetes um, KubeCon Europe co-located events at the AI Day, Edge Day, and GnativeCon. And yeah, feel free to check them out. With that, um, thank you and see you next time.